Yeah. Next up is Hervé Pages, who's going to talk to us about sparse array objects. I'm going to have to try and be a little more strict about the time, otherwise we're all going to be here till lunch. I'll be short. Don't worry. Okay. Does it work? Yeah. It does. Cool. I'm going to make it. Oh, that's probably good enough. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the work I've been doing uh, with um, sparse data representation in R. Just hit the right arrow. I'm, I'm no longer in slide mode. In slide two mode. I don't think you ever. Am I now? I think so. If you click the top right corner, the arrows, then it this one. Make it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So first, um, I want to uh, discuss a bit what uh, what's currently available in R for sparse data representation, and uh, I'm just going to talk about um, in-memory representation. Uh, not going to discuss um, on disk representations. Um, so as most of you know, uh, the standard way to um, represent a sparse data in R is with a DGC matrix object. Um, and that's from the matrix package, uh, which is a cron package. It's a recommended package, so you, every R installation has it by default. Um, and it's, it's used a lot, uh, especially in Bioconductor. Um, where uh, I've found more than 100 packages uh, using this um, container for uh, storing sparse data. Um, yeah, so it's, it has been around for, for about 20 years now. Uh, matrix package is a very uh, early package in R. Yeah, and to uh, complement uh, the capabilities of the matrix package, um, some, some people have uh, come up with uh, uh, those two packages, matrix stats and uh, sparse matrix stats. So the matrix stats package uh, by Enric uh, Bankston um, provides you know, a row and column um, summarization operations. Uh, on matrix objects, and uh, but it doesn't work with so it works with um, it works with uh, ordinary matrices, um, but but it doesn't support um, DGC matrix objects. So uh, Constantin, uh, which is a, a bioconductor contributor, uh, came up with the uh, sparse matrix stats package to uh, to fill that gap. Uh, and uh, this is pretty amazing package, all implemented in uh, C++, uh, very fast. It provides very fast uh, row and, and, and column uh, matrix summarization uh, for DGC matrix objects. Uh, so yeah, so those, those summarization uh, operations I'm talking about are those uh, row zooms, call zooms, row means, call means, etc. operation. So here's what you can do with sparse matrix stats. Just an example. Yeah, but um, there are some limitations with uh, the, the what uh, DGC matrix objects can do. So f first, of course, uh, it's only for uh, two-dimensional data. Uh, there is a hard limit on the number of uh, non-zero values that can be stored in a DGC matrix object, no more than uh, 2 power 31. And uh, also um, a concern sometimes that uh, the non-zero values cannot be stored as integers. They, are on, they can only be stored as double, uh, double values. And so that's not optimal uh, for the memory footprint of the object because double 
uh, is twice the size, double in C is, is, is twice the size of an integer. Uh, and so some operations uh, are inefficient with uh, DG symmetric objects. So here's an example. Uh, this is what you get when you try to C bind, for example, two DG two symmetric objects uh, that together have more than uh, the maximum number of uh, non zero values that is allowed. Get an error. Can't do it. Um, yeah, so here I'm showing some details about the, uh, the internal representation of those objects. So DGC, DGC matrix has some sibling, some sibling, uh, there are some sibling classes. Uh, uh, the D in DGC matrix stands for double. So it, it tells us that the non-zero values are stored as double. Um, and but there is also this LGC matrix class uh, where the uh, non-zero values, so this is to represent, this is to represent a, a sparse matrix of logical values. So the, the non-zero, the non-false, because the equivalent the zero for logical is false. So the, the, the true <laughs> values or the NA values uh, are stored here in a logical uh, vector. Uh, but there is no IGC matrix class. So if you want to store counts, uh, which are typically integer uh, values, uh, we have to use the DGC matrix uh, representation. So, um, so I uh, work with, um, I, I, I wanted to, uh, to try something different. I, I wanted to uh, come up with something uh, new for for uh, storing sparse data uh, uh, in R to represent sparse data in an array-like object. Uh, so I, I started to work on this class, sparse array. Uh, so this is in the S4 arrays package. It's not in Bioconductor yet, but uh, I intend to submit this package soon. So it's still a work in progress. And uh, the idea is to uh, address some of the limitations of uh, DGC matrix. And so here's, here's what it looks like. Uh, I'm just using the constructor here uh, to um, convert that uh, DGC matrix object into a, a sparse array uh, object. So I, I talk a little bit more about what the SVT uh, thing uh, means here. But the real class of this object is SVT underscore sparse matrix. Sparse array is just uh, a virtual class. Um, so uh, it's not limited to matrices. It can be an array of any dimension. So you see zeros here, but the zeros are just an artifact of the way things are displayed. It's just a show method that displays the zeros. But there are no zeros stored in the matrix in the object, of course. It's a sparse representation. So only the non-zero values are, are uh, stored there. Uh, NZ count uh, is just is the number of non-zero uh, values in, in, the, in the object. So 12 non-zero values here. Um, it supports any type. So uh, you can store in any R atomic type. Uh, so integer, row, uh, logical, character, uh, complex is also supported. Um, and, and there is no limit, there's no limit in the number of non-zero values that you can store in the, in, in the object. So the limit, of course, is going to be the amount of memory that you have on your machine. But as long as you have enough memory, uh, you should be able to store uh, as many uh, non-zero values as, as you want. So, so for example, just one more minute. Ish, yeah. Okay, okay. So lots of uh, lots of non-zero values here. Of course, that 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 is a big object, uh, twenty-six gigabytes. Uh, that's the memory footprint of this object. Um, yeah. So uh, I was going to show uh, some details about how things are represented internally. So quickly, uh, the idea is to uh, store uh, the non-zero values in a sparse vector. That's what I sh I'm showing to the left here. 
so sparse vector is just a, a, a little table with two columns. Uh, on the left, the offset of the values, uh, and on the on the right column, the uh, non-zero values, um, the values, the non-zero values. Yeah, uh, and for and and to represent a, a, a twenty by six uh, object, I just use uh, six of those sparse vectors. So that's that's what uh, internally uh, two by six uh, sparse array object looks like. But then this can be repeated to add dimensions. So on the left, you have this uh, 2D uh, representation that I just showed uh, in the earlier uh, slide. And uh, if you want to uh, represent a 3D object, uh, you just add one uh, more level uh, in your uh, sparse vector tree. So that's how, that's how you call this, uh, this tree here. Uh, it's a tree with, uh, where the leaves are sparse, sparse vectors. Uh, so this leads to very efficient uh, re representation and operation. There's a really fast, fast access to uh, uh, fast random access to any part uh, of the object, and this leads to very uh, efficient uh, operations in general. So here are some, you know, some benchmarks. Uh, so it's it's it's, it's not, um, yeah. So column column selection is is just amazingly fast uh, compared to GDC matrix. Um, yeah. So overall, it's it's. It's very efficient. It's way more efficient than uh, a, a GG symmetric object. Uh, this one here, I don't know if you see the map. Yeah, okay. It's not. It's not. It's not a typo. It's really a GC matrix object. I guess they were not designed to support uh, this operation because it's not a common operation. But super Simon should work anyway. And uh, but with the GC matrix, it's very very slow. Uh, yeah, I think I'm done. This is a this is a long list of things that still need to be implemented to have a full, uh, fully featured uh, array-like container that you can use for uh, all the basic operations that you expect to be able to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, still a lot of work here. And uh, yeah, cool. Thank you. Anybody have a question for Hervé? One? Is this um, like a crop That's the idea. Yeah. Cool. Are there any questions in the chat? There's a question on, on row lookup. Why is row lookup so much slower? Is it based on how it's traversed or? Well, again? Uh, why is row why selection, is row selection so much slower so relative to? Uh, that's that's. You know the the representation is, is the representation is column oriented, ah, in the like, like with DGC matrix, it's column oh. oriented. There is this initial this early choice. The choice could have been otherwise, you right. know, to do a, a, a row oriented representation, but it's it's a column oriented representation. So accessing the columns is really easy because you have a list mm. of of six columns. So if you want to pick up uh, column number of three and yeah, column number five, just right you just grab those two right. list elements. There's nothing. A really fancy you need to do mm -hmm. nothing complicated but if you want to uh you know extract rows it's more complicated because you have to do some kind of uh, uh match yep. uh, between the row indices and those offsets right. that you have in those sparse vectors so you, you need some kind of uh hash yeah, yeah. or a binary search or right. there are several ways to uh, deal with this that makes sense. okay thanks okay um next one here from from Quan Lu, 